Hi, I thought I would share today a, a few ideas on how to take care of your flute, mainly with tying on the block after you've removed it. Why would you want to remove the block from a flute? Um, Let's see, I'm going to grab this one first. When you play the flute, the Native American style flute, you're breathing into the breath hole of the flute. And when you do that, there's, there's moisture in the air that you are breathing out. And that moisture goes into the breath hole, into what they call the slow air chamber here, and underneath this block, or any block on a Native American style flute, there is another hole right about here that lets that air come out and then gets forced down the flue area which is right here. It's just before what they call the true sound hole. Sometimes a flute will start not performing well for you, and it's mainly from moisture building up in that flue area. It's called wet out. And to get rid of that, a quick, easy thing to do would be to put your finger over the edge of that true sound hole just to make it not make noise and very forcefully shoot a blast of air through the flute. And you will sometimes get a little bead of moisture or something. It, it might even leak out on the side here. And then you can usually start playing again. But there's moisture inside the flute. so. In this flute's case, there are two leather ties, one small one just for decoration. And to get them loose, what I usually do is I pull up and to the side a little bit to, to break loose that knot. It's a simple overhand knot, usually, sometimes not. Ha, little pun there. So that has taken off the first one. The next one, pull up and over a little bit to loosen that knot and then just untie it. Now this particular flute and, and the high spirit flutes in general have a lot of wraps. So this one seems to be the one that is over the top of the other one. So I'm gonna undo that and I'm holding the block on with my other hand here as I'm untying this or unwrapping it. Most new high spirits flutes have a rubber band around the block and flute helping to hold that in place. I take them off because those rubber bands, if they are left on for a period of time and not removed, they will start to degrade and actually kind of melt itself onto the finish of the flute. So, after playing a flute, I would take the block off, let them air out, and, and just sit quietly. The area here, the flue is built into the bottom side of the block. And this is the area because it is so narrow or, or um, because it's not very deep, sometimes those beads of moisture can collect there and actually start blocking some of the airflow and making the airflow more turbulent, sometimes just shutting the sound off because there's so much moisture that can accumulate. 
I do have a video. If you are experiencing a lot of wet out issues, I'll leave a link uh, probably up here on what you can do. First thing would be to notify the maker, the flute maker, if there's a problem with wet out. Um, but if you're brave, you can look at that video and see what I have done and found ways to help me reduce the problem of wet out in many of my flutes that have had a problem. So I let it dry out. To tie this type back on, you just kind of reverse the process. You figure out which way the, the block has to go on. The flue is opened on this end, closed on this end. So you would want that pointing at the true sound hole, the open end. So I would position it right over in between the two holes and close to the, the front edge, looking at the mouth end of it, the mouthpiece end of it, the front edge, I would position it close to that. In this case, I'm going to hold it in place with my thumb. Take the large leather tie again and get it about in position. You can kind of see some of the, the areas where it has already been there. So this is going to give you a good guide to how it can go. Now I'm going to move my hand over and hold the block and have my finger on the leather strap and hold that tight so that I can start to wrap it. Wrap it around, overlap a little bit. One more wrap. This one has four, some have many, many more. And you can see that the, the leather ties are about the right position. When I get to this point, I keep the ties, this one coming above, this one coming at the back or at the front end, I should say, with the mouthpiece down here. And I'm going to hold this, the flute, between my knees just to help secure it. I'm going to pull up while I'm holding the flute down with my fingers, pull up with my other hands so it's tight. Do a simple overhand knot. And then position the block so it's straight. And I want it a little bit closer to the true sound hole. So I'm going to slide that up a little bit. I usually like most of my flutes to have that block to where it is about the thickness of a dime's width. You can see this part of the wood just in front of that block, almost the thickness of a dime maybe just a slightly bit less than that. You can move it forward and back to see what sounds best to you. Sometimes, depending on the flute and the block, moving it back towards the mouthpiece can raise the pitch of the flute slightly. So you can kind of tune the flute a little bit, moving it toward the true sound hole more will lower the pitch slightly. Again, that depends on your flute. In this case, this one has an extra little decorative wrap. I'm going to put that approximately in the middle of that section. Bring the ties so that they come right about where that other one is. This tie went that direction, this tie is coming out that direction, so I'm going to bring these up right over that, and that's going to help 
keep those tight a little bit. I bring these up so that they are even. Hold it with my knees again. Whoop, and that slipped. And again, a simple overhand knot. I try to keep the leather straight as it goes across the other leather in this case, or the flute body, just to keep it looking nice. Lift up, tighten, and pull to make it tight. Then I just very gently bring those down, play the flute, and we've got a nice working flute that's been dried out. The high spirits flutes usually have a lot of wraps. One style that is sometimes easier to do. Uh, this particular one has two different leather ties. It's mainly just a looks thing for this one. Untie it the same way. Pull up and over, up and over. To loosen that knot a little bit, untie it. Remove the ties. The flue in the case of this flute is in the flute body. So the groove is a part of the flute body. The bottom of the block itself is completely flat. It has a very, in this case, it has a very, very tiny chimney, which means it has little teeny wings right here. See if that'll focus on that. And it sits into kind of a little groove in the case of this flute. This has a little groove that the block sits in to help keep it straight. So this one, I would just take the tie so that it is positioned about the same length on either side. Hold it with my knees. Simple overhand knot. Pull up, away from the flute, and then snug it down. Check the flute, or check where the block sits in relationship to the true sound hole. Get that positioned a little bit. Put the other leather tie on. Position it so it's pretty even. Try and keep it straight. Hold it with my knees. In this case, I try to keep the leather strips going the same way. It doesn't really make any difference. It's just a, a looks thing so that the leather, when it, when it comes off the back of the flute, it looks kind of even at both, both ways. In this case, I'm going to pinch them together so that it it looks I don't know just that's just the way I like it and they're hanging pretty even there position the block where you think it should go forward forward or aft and give it a try If I move it too far 
over the true sound hole, it will tend to overblow easier. If I move it too far, this one won't move that far. This one, because of that groove, this one won't move as far forward as I would like to show. So I'll get another flute. Put this one back. This flute is designed so that the flue is on the bottom of the block. It has a pretty large chimney, deep this way. And this flu, flute, I can move the whole thing forward so that I can have that exit hole wide open so it will air out and I can leave it that way. I don't have to untie this. But this particular block, untie it the same exact way. I want to take it off so I can show you on this one how I do it. This block, and I, you'll notice I'm over a surface that I've got a, a wool blanket on just in case this was to drop. It would land on something soft. This is kind of a delicate block. If I was be standing up and this was to drop onto a hard surface, it could break the wood. It could crack. I don't want that to happen. So I pull up and over, up and over, and that loosens this knot to make it easy to untie. And you can see I'm still, I'm holding the leather and the block so that it doesn't fall. Now I'm going to hold the block with this hand so I've freed up the leather and now I can undo the leather and remove the block. This particular flute has a an extra piece of wood that has been put onto the bottom of the block to make the flue area. Some flute makers use a spacer, a separate spacer, to do the same exact thing. The nest is completely flat and smooth on this flute. That will aid if I wanted to just slide it back, keep it tied on, so that it can dry out and you can, you can have your flute sitting upright either direction to help moisture come out of, drain out of the, the true, or not the true sound hole, the sack, the slow air chamber, is this area right here on this flute. This one, because this is so deep and this is, this sticks out over the block, the base of the block so much, this one is a little bit of a struggle for me when I first learned how to tie this one on. So I, I hold the block on up above. I get the leather. This one has two wraps, so I usually start with the middle underneath. And then it's even on either side, and I bring it through the opening in the block where my hand is, and I, I do the back part first so it's back inside of that, and then I will, whoops, it slipped a little bit, and then I will hold that with my finger while I pull the other side pretty tight, hold it underneath, switch my finger over so I'm holding both edges, and now Bring this over through the hole the opposite direction, keeping it straight. Now I've got a good looking wrap over the top of the block, sitting next to each other there.
turn it over. Pull each side up. In between my knees again. On this case, this side is up here, so I'm going to go over the other leather. I'm going to keep them on the same side that they're coming off the block on. Same, same type of deal. Pull up, down, up, and then down, and it will make kind of a V underneath there, but still look really nice on the sides. Position it so that the block is just ahead of that true sound hole, and then give it a try. So I hope this video was helpful for you on learning how to remove the block, why you would want to do that, and also what um, the way, some easy ways that I found that help me to be able to tie these back on. I have watched some people hold them under their arm and tie them on this way. Um, and that works, but I've fumbled that way. So I like something pretty close to me. Um, even doing this over like a bed or a couch, something like that. Um, I like to be able to, to hold it with my knees while I'm adjusting and, and tightening that strap. A more secure method for me to do that so I don't do any damage on the flute. Hopefully this was helpful. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And when you do, click the little bell down over there so that you'll be notified when I post new videos. It could be a tutorial like this on how to take care of a flute, how to play these beautiful instruments. It could be a comparison of different flutes in the same key or using different woods or a different way to make the flute. I will be doing a review on this flute very soon. Um, could be one of my music videos that I do. I've got quite a few of those. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this was helpful for you and Hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. You take care.